You are investigating the seventh level of Moria, searching for the Chamber of Records and any sign of Balin's colony. In the heavy twilight of a hall, a bulky tome is discovered in the grip of a dwarf skeleton. You carefully take possession of the book. Perhaps it will give you some answers. Hello and welcome to the latest episode of The Line Unbroken, my progression-style playthrough series of The Lord of the Rings the Card Game. Here yeah, I'm continuing with Nightmare, and specifically Nightmare 7, Nightmare the 7th level, the second Code of Doom quest. So, Nightmare card here, set up, set Overseer Maurul and Chamber of Records aside out of play. Forced when stage 2B is revealed, make Chamber of Records the active location, returning any currently active location to the staging area, and add Overseer Maurul to the staging area. Then shuffle all copies of Barlin's Doom in the encounter discard pile back into the encounter deck. Here's set up, search the encounter deck for Book of Mazarbul, and have the first player attached to a hero of his choice. Shuffle the encounter deck, of course. Uh, attack to a counter attack, and does not exhaust to come to the quest. So, Frodo is going to be my choice. Has two willpower for the quest, and. Is a good defender. Actually, I could do Berivor instead, so that you could quest and draw cards. That would be an alternative, but she does have two attack, which might be useful at some point in the quest. That's probably always definitely just quest defend. Okay. The dwarven runes of the book appear to hold a detailed record of the fledgling colony, but there is some elvish script at the end which seems out of place. We go one encounter back to player and add it to the staging area. The player must deal X damage to one ally he controls X is the number of allies he controls. Well, that's a very nice card to see during setup. I have no allies. Ah, Balin's Doom. Well, Surge Doomed 1, add one goblin. No, sorry, add one resource to each goblin enemy in play. This is the sort of big extra mechanic of this quest is adding resources to the goblins to cause various problems. But of course at this point there are no goblins in play, so that does nothing. Western Hall. Each goblin enemy gets plus one threat for each resource on it. This ability does not stack with other copies of Western Hall. Travel, add one resource to each goblin enemy in play. This is obviously one of the things which makes the resources a problem. But, yeah, okay, let's start the quest. Well, then, more than healing, definitely a good thing to see right at the start. Okay, so I want to put this Doom Dine signal onto Frodo right away. That's the one definite thing. I could play Daron's runes. See if I find anything more useful, but honestly, um, there's nothing that I'd be able to play right away, so I may as well leave it. Now, here, the weapons I have foe hammer, of course, so. I also have Mighty Prowess, so I guess I want to play the weapons and the Mighty Prowess, so we'll put the Mighty Prowess and Theoden, play the Gondolin on Theoden, and Dagger of Westerness also on Theoden, I suppose. Let's put the Dagger of Westerness on Mary. And that's it for planning. So, questing. There's four threat in the staging area. I don't feel the need to go too fast right at the start. I'm obviously questing with Baron for two, thanks to Theoden. And Frodo for two. Rome for two. That's up to six. I should do a bit more. Actually, let's. Uh, I suppose this is very long works. Um, I 
send Mary for another three. So that would be nine willpower. I'm okay with this. Ah. Orc Taskmaster. When revealed, add one resource to each goblin enemy in play. Fortunately, there are still no goblins. Worth noting, of course, all goblins are orcs. Not all orcs are goblins, the way that the traits break down in this game. So, and yes, force when a goblin enemy with at least one resource on it is dealt any amount of damage, remove one resource from that enemy and cancel all damage just dealt to it. Always copywriting. He takes the damage from far then. And ah, Pit Goblin. When revealed, add two resources to Pit Goblin. He would take the damage from Thalin before that. So he takes the damage and then adds two resources, which will prevent him taking further damage for the moment. They also increase his threat. So he is currently five threat, and this guy's one. So, okay, I actually lose the quest by one. Now I should really get rid of his Western Hall, so I'll travel there right away. Adding another resource. And now... Okay, I am obviously not really prepared to deal with this Orc Taskmaster yet. So I should try to do something about the Pit Goblin, so... I'll engage him on this side. Defend with Frodo, who is a sentinel with the Dunedan signal. Attacking gets plus one, plus three if it's a goblin. So it's attacking for five, and Frodo would take three damage. I raise my threat by three. And then Theoden attacks for four, since Blade of Goblin is plus one against orcs. And I remove the resource. Variable will exhaust to draw cards for one of the decks. I suppose it's going to be this one. Okay, fast hitch is good. And control in. Both those. Good thing to see. So, yeah, I think I will spend. All my three resources on both her. I could exhaust him to go looking for a weapon, but since I already have two weapons, that's not such an urgent matter. I'm going to put this fast hitch onto Mary. Okay, so now there's potentially more stuff that's going on, so let's play down the wounds. Okay, what do I discard? I might actually discard Aristor. I'm not going to get to play him anytime soon. And yeah, okay. And then unexpected courage and to pay them. Or onto Barrel. Well no, it's a matter of getting an extra willpower there then is more. Okay, so let's see, there is just the one threat in the staging area. Request for two, four, seven, ten, twelve. Goblin Swordsman takes a damage from Farlin. Goblin Spearman takes a damage from Farlin. So that's added three additional threat. I make eight progress. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. And now I need to deal with these enemies. Yeah, okay, so I'm going to engage the spearman 
here and the swordsman here. Deal out shadow cards. Now Frodo will defend against the swordsman. I will actually take that as damage since I have a Warden of Healing in hand. Um, hmm. I want to just risk this undefended, which is a significant risk, potentially, but... Yeah, undefended. Okay, next time we should do defending character, there is no defending character. So I will assign 2 damage to Thalin. And over here I'm going to defend with Beravor. If you're attacking enemy as a goblin, add 1 resource to it. Okay. But Beravor takes no damage. So now... I will attack with Theoden and Merry against the goblin swordsman. Killing it. I place progress for the Blade of Gondolin. I will exhaust the Dagger of Westernus. Trigger Foe Hammer and draw three more cards. I will trigger Merry to ready Theoden, and I will trigger Mighty Prowess to deal a damage to an enemy sharing a trait with the enemy I just killed. So, Goblin or Orc. Either way, it's just going to remove a resource. And, yeah, let's go for the Spearman, since that puts it one damage from death. And then I will attack and remove another resource from the Pit Goblin, and since Bofer isn't doing anything, I will exhaust him to search the top five cards of my deck for a weapon. Okay. Another Blood of Gondolin. Shuffle that up. And discard Shadow Cards. Control M. Sneak attack is good. Alright. So I will play the Warden Peeling right away. And that'll be it. Over here, I'm going to play Keeping Count. On to Theoden. And actually, I should put this down here so I can see the number of resources on it. Yep. And then play the second blade of Gondolin. On to Theoden. Actually, no, let's not play the second blade of Gondolin. I'll play. Piece of mighty prowess onto Mary, and then hold on to my resources so I can potentially play Swift Strike if I want to. All right, questing, sneak attack, Gandalf. Draw three cards. Okay, now this belt is the thing that I wanted. Test of will is also welcome. So that's a 4, 6, 9, 12, 14 against 1. I don't want to overdo this because I really don't want to advance the quest just yet. So I could hold back Theoden maybe. Or Mary. Let's hold back Mary. So that takes off 3. So I'm 11 against 1. That's fine. Goblin Skirmisher takes the damage. Each Goblin enemy, note it's each, this doesn't just apply to the Skirmisher itself, 
Each goblin enemy gets plus one attack for each resource on it. This ability does not stack with other copies of a goblin skirmisher. And a cave troll, which takes a bunch of Arwen. <coughs> the cave troll is a problem, and I will have to engage it. Um, okay, so that's added another six threat. I'll make four progress. Right, so now Gandalf comes back to my hand. Daron's runes. Um, Meeting. I probably don't need the Master of the Forge, to be honest. So, Theron's Rooms again. Okay, I don't need all of these boot rooms. I don't need all the boots I know. Touch the boots. Exhaust Barrival. Let's draw two more cards. I was really hoping for another sneak attack. Alright, so I will have to deal with this troll now. Which probably means that I'm going to have to kill both of them. In the short term, because I also have to deal with the skirmisher and the two enemies I already had. So I guess it has to be the skirmisher here and the cave troll here. Not shadows. Right. So. Okay. Yeah, okay, so now Gloin will defend against the spin. That goblin spin is the saving area. He takes spin damage and gains one resource. The Warden of Healing will defend against the skirmisher and I'll play two for swift strike to deal two damage to it. Frodo will sentinel defend against the pit goblin. Plus one attack then it's a goblin do it another shadow card. Okay so it's three attack Attacking enemies of Goblin, add one resource to it. But it's only three attack because, of course, I killed the Skirmisher, taking away the plus four resources. Now and then, I guess, Gopher is going to die. To the troll, add, uh, for each excess point of combat damage, uh, must have another character you control. So. I have three points of excess damage to assign. One, two, three. Mary will attack the pit goblin to remove the resource. Fed and Mary together. Mary is now three attack. Fed and is also three against non 
Right. So that's two more damage on the cave troll. Control N. Of the Wind Lord. I can potentially do a rain of arrows. Uh, I do have an envelope pack here. Okay, so yeah, let's play the Westworld Outrider. Over here, boots from Erebor on to growing. Definitely want to play that one really. I also want to play Arwen, but Test of Will is a thing. So yeah, I guess I'll definitely play the Envoy and I'll just fade in. And then I guess we'll play more of these belts now. And save for a test of will. Now, there is three threats in the staging area. Crossing for two, four, seven. Okay, pressing for 10. Goblin Archer takes damage from Carlin, which kills it. Western Hall is another 4 threat. And I'm reluctant to travel there at the moment with all the goblins in play. So, yeah, let, let's just pass on that. I make 3 progress. Now. Okay, I still don't have to engage the Taskmaster, but I can. I do have to engage the Spearman. I'm going to make use of the Rain of Arrows with my Vassal of the Windlord. The, the Vassal of the Windlord will just be flying around dropping arrows on the Coffin's heads in Moria. Totally makes perfect sense. Um, so yeah, I could... Okay, actually, also defences. So, I'm going to pull a bit of trickery and use the Westfall Outrider 
to engage this goblin spearman so that it, after this deck finishes its attacks so this spearman will not get to attack. Frodo will be defending the troll What am I even doing about this pit goblin? Hmm. Yeah, that, that's problematic. I guess I didn't think about it. So, I'm definitely engaging this spearman here and leaving the taskmaster where he is. So, let's do our shadow cards. Alright, Frodo defends against the Troll. And I've got the Swordsman to the staging area. And I raise my threat by 4. Now, it's probably the best thing to do actually is to defend with the Outrider and trust to a favourable shadow. Okay, take one damage. So now, this deck has finished resolving its attacks. So we move on to this deck's attacks. And now, I discard the Westfold Outrider to engage this Goblin Spearman, which, since this deck has already finished resolving attacks from its engaged enemies, the Spearman doesn't get to make its attack. This one does, so I'll defend it with Glowing. He takes damage and gains a resource. Now, over here, pay one for Rain of Arrows, and deal damage to one damage to each enemy engaged with me, which kills this Spearman. Okay. Now we're getting somewhere. Bearable can't do anything to this spearman. If I, if I attack the cave troll, I will only do two damage, that won't kill it. So that's not useful. However, if I attack the Pit Goblin, uh, plenty of attack. So, it's dead. I place a progress for the Blade of Goblin. I don't know how to do that. Nope. I ready Thurden using Mary, and both Thurden and Mary have Mighty Prowess attached, so I can deal. One damage for each Mighty Prowess to another enemy that shares a trait with the enemy just destroyed. So that would be Goblin or Orc. Oh, actually, I could do Feral plus the end to do one damage. So I can do two damage now to a uh, Goblin or Orc. So it's going to be one of these. Let's take the Spearman now to the staging area. Unfortunately, Theoden can't do anything now that he's ready. So, do I want to do this damage? Okay, I will heal Glowin and Theoden. And now the question is do I want to have Barrivor and the Envoy attack to deal one damage and put the spear in one hit point away from death? Or do I want to draw more cards? And I'm inclined to just draw more cards. Okay. Okay. So that's it for the round. Control N. Alright. So, now I can definitely afford Arwen.
and fast hitch. Uh, actually, do I want to press on Frodo? Not really. He only has the one defense that's really good. So, just marry to get more attacks and kill more things. Seems like the way to go. I'll exhaust Narvi's belt, meaning spirit. And play this unexpected courage. So, do I go Theoden again? Or Berevor? Because Theoden is a sentinel, so if defense is what I need, then that'll work out fine. But if it's attack, then Theoden is not ranged. Oh! Theoden killed an enemy, so I can resolve some keeping count. Let's go with Berevor. Now, there is six threat in the staging area. Don't quest too hard. Oh, this deck has to do planning as well. So, let's play two for. Let's go for Watcher of the Bruin. And leave it at that. I can do the Ring of Arrows if I want to. So, Arwen will target the Watcher of the Bruin. He al he's already Sentinel, but the extra defense will be potentially useful. So I'm crossing 2, 4, 7, 9. Might still just leave it at that. Uh, let's see, because two progress will advance the quest, which right now might not be the best idea. I'd like to clear up the board a bit before I advance the quest. So, and it stands if I reveal, somehow I reveal one threat or less, then I will advance it. If I send, say, variable, then that would bring it to the point where I would have to reveal, I would still advance if I revealed only three threat. So if I send, maybe if I send an envoy, then have it 10 versus 6. So, Okay, reveal upper hall, doomed to and watch the lines. Test of will. So I have revealed three threat. I make one progress and do not advance the quest. Travel to the upper hall. Now, I have to engage the Swordsman, I don't have to engage the Taskmaster, but I could. Um, let's should be able to kill the troll now. It'll take, it'll take seven attack, which three. Oh, I'm not below its engagement cost anymore. I wasn't below its engagement cost last round, so I did one less damage. If I do the Rain of Arrows on my side, then that'll work. Is three, five, six. No, no, no. I think it's still only six, not seven. So I can't kill the troll yet. I definitely want the swordsman here. Then maybe. 
could engage the Taskmaster, but really this deck is the one that's equipped to kill it. So, and there are no resources at the moment, so we will yield that. Okay. Now, I want to keep getting more resources, so going. And okay, I can definitely draw cards. I, yeah, I possibly could, should have drawn cards before engaging enemies, but it's okay. Just hoping for maybe a faint. But no such luck. Okay. Cave Troll is going to have to be Frodo again. Defending character with an ally is kind of can play. I am glad that I defended with Frodo. Maybe I should have brought some shadow cancellation. It might have been a good idea. I have to raise my crap by four. And be watching Bruinen. Actually, yeah, I'm, I'm not going to bother with the Rain of Arrows. Uh, yeah, the Watch with the Bruin and will defend this. Okay, takes no damage, but I have to discard a card. So let's discard this Blade of Gondolin to keep him in play. Um, Berivor has nothing to do with the spare action. One of you will heal up. Gloom and Frodo. Now, attack with Bed and Mary. Easily kill the Swordsman. Trigger Mighty Prowess. Trigger Bed and Gondolin. Uh, trigger Mighty Prowess. I'm actually going to put the damage onto the Taskmaster. To start making some progress on killing him rather than kill off the spearman. He's okay just hitting blow in every round, and next round I'm thinking of spearman plus spear. Should you get a kills? Am I ready? Third and with Mary. Uh, plus one, I'm keeping count. Now, actually, if I attack with the Vassal of the Wind Lord, we. Five, six. Yeah, the attack with the vassal. Let's go for it. Nine, kill the cave troll. Mighty prowess is no good because there are no other trolls in play. And I can place progress with Lady Gondolin. I can ready Thedon again for all the good it does. I have to discard the vassal. And plus one is also if you can count. Okay, control N. Another blade of gondolin. Okay, let's draw more cards here. Okay. Oh hammer is good. I feel more optimistic about my chances if I advance the quest at this point. So, then let's get a spearman with a spear. And then over here, I hit him off. And move to that. So, five threat in the staging area. Uh, Alan will still be targeting the watch with Brunin. So two, four. Seven, nine. Eleven. Twelve. Still don't really need to go two I need three progress. So 
Yeah, okay, let's. So I'm playing, so I can be pretty sure I'm going to be honest. Deep Mines, oh, okay, this is annoying. Forced when a goblin enemy enters play, add one resource to that enemy if Deep Mines is in the staging area. And. Beats and Echoes! When revealed, reveal the top deck. Okay, so this is weird phrasing, but it's the same weird phrasing as is on stage 2, the stage 2 quest card, where generally this sort of thing would be uh, discard cards from the top of the encounter deck and then. So, reveal the top X cards of the encounter deck, adding all enemies to the staging area, discard the other revealed cards without resolving them. X is 2 plus the number of players not engaged with a goblin enemy. So, this would be three cards, reveal all enemies. I am going to cancel it. So I've only added two threats to the staging area, I make eight progress. Two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. And I advance the quest, which means Chamber of Records from the active location, and then obviously now I've always added to the staging area. You have discovered the chamber. Before you lies the resting place of Balin, last Lord of Moria. The final portion of the book tells the grim tale. Balin was slain in the Dimril Dale, and the dwarves were tra then trapped in the mines. It seems as if there are no survivors. You stand silently by his tomb, but cannot tarry. Orc war cries and horns sound close. You leave the cumbersome book as a testament to the dwarves' valour, and prepare to fight your way out, lest Balin's fate becomes your own. Remove the book of Mazabo from the game. Forced at the end of the staging step, reveal the top X cards of the encounter deck, adding all enemies to the staging area, discard the other reward cards without resolving them, X is the number of players. When the players defeat the stage, they win the game. So, uh, let's take a look here. Chamber of Records. Immune to player card effects. Each goblin enemy with at least one resource on it is immune to player events. Forced when a goblin enemy engages a player, add two resources to that enemy. And Overseer Marrow. Overseer Marrow gets plus X threat, attack, and defense, where X is the highest number of resources on a goblin enemy in play. So at the moment, none. The players cannot win the game unless Overseer Marrow is in the victory display. So, I have to engage Overseer Marrow. I have to engage the Taskmaster as well now, because the stack threat has gone up somewhat. So, let's optionally engage the Taskmaster here, and also engage Marrow here. This is where I really want him. Well, this is, this is where I want most enemies. Okay. So for defenses. Obviously, I could just kill the spearman, but it's generating me resources, so I'm not overly concerned. Ah, yes. I will use Henemarth to scry the top card before dealing a shadow card, so I know that this is plus one attack. The Taskmaster is not a goblin. But that would kill the Watcher of the Brunin, so I should not defend this with the Watcher of the Brunin. So I will instead defend it with Frodo. Yeah, okay. Yes, I will defend it with Frodo. So it's five attack, and I raise my threat by three. Now, obviously, Marrow, I will defend with the Watcher of the Brewing. The attacking enemy is a goblin, it's not. He's only three attack against three defense, thanks to Arwen. So that is not a problem. Now, Glowing will defend against the Spearman. Plus one attack, and with the goblin deal it another shadow card. Okay. Nothing. So three attack, two damage, I gain two resources. Exhaust Narvi's belt named Spirit, and play the Goblin's Greeting to drop my threat by six. So let's see. Third is four attack against orcs. 
Mary's. Yeah, I can definitely kill the Taskmaster, no problem. So let's do that. We get four, seven. Oh, actually, yeah, that that's actually just exactly enough. But it is enough. Ready, Thaden? I can't place progress with the Blade of Gondolin. I was just here. I trigger Foe Hammer. First thing, the Dagger of Westerness. To draw three cards. And I guess I will trigger both Mighty Prowesses to deal damage to OCM Marl. Let's do some healing. Glowing and Merry. And now attacking for four, six, seven, eight. Five more damage. Okay. This is pretty solid. Discard these shadow cards. Actually, uh, yeah, I'm just going to do this now. Goblin Cleaver, exhausting this blade of Gondolin to deal three damage to obviously a mile since he's an orc. Yeah, it's an interesting dynamic in this quest where you have the goblins who are generally weaker enemies but they can get powered up by the resources and the the ones who aren't goblins who are the bigger orcs do not benefit from the resources but they tend to be more dangerous in and of themselves and because they sometimes play around with the resources, so like the Taskmaster makes the resources more of a problem. Obviously, a Maril obviously is powered up by however many resources are around. Yeah, okay, so that worked pretty well. Control and another Envoy. Probably should have included Errand Riders or um, parting gifts, maybe, so that I can move more resources over across the table. But, never mind. So, okay, what do I want to play over here? Spirit of the Citadel would be good. Yeah, I probably should pass the resource. Um, Hmm. Oh, no, it's not. Yeah, I think, yeah, I think this will make sense. So, actually, let's exhaust Barrel, draw two cards. Okay, sneak attack Gandalf is good. Test of Will, also good. So, pay two for the Envoy. And actually, I will start with this to head in. Now, over here, I'm going to play this Spear of the Citadel onto the Watcher of the Bruin, who defended an attack last round. And, no, I, I did not discard a card. I discarded the Blade of Gondolin. And I can play. Okay, let's play. The Vassal of the Windlord. And then I potentially have Rain of Arrows available. So. Six threat in the staging area. Sneak attack Gandalf. Drop my threat by five. So I'm questing for four, six. I have 
to not quest for Frodo now. Uh, when 12, 14. Sixteen. Oh, to go pretty hard to get through the chain of records. Eighteen. And we reveal. Let's look at each player must deal X damage to one ally he controls with X the number of allies he controls. Okay, goodbye, Vassal of the Windlord. Goodbye, Envoy of Power Gear. Minus one willpower. And Goblin Swordsman takes one damage from Farmin, gains a resource from Deep Mines, which gives it plus one threat. And now, of course, I also resolve the force effect here. So, top two cards. Okay, they are both enemies, so they are both revealed. The Goblin Archer takes the damage from Farmin and dies. The Chieftain of the Pit takes the damage from Tharlin and gets plus three attack until the end of the round. Unless I want to cancel that, but there are probably worse things that I could be cancelling. So uh, that's an extra two threat again. Which means that I would appear to have just fallen short. Okay. So, uh, there's nothing to be done about it. Seven progress on the Chamber of Records. Gandalf comes back to my hand. And. Okay, so now I need to do something about those enemies. I can't do Rain of Arrows anymore because I don't have a ranged character to exhaust. But, yeah, okay, so Frodo's gonna have to defend the Chieftain of the Pit. Obviously. So, let's have the Chieftain here, and Swordsman can come here. Alright, so. Um, yeah, I have stuff I can discard for the watch we could be running still. So, hmm. Okay, Glove has five max hit points. No, I don't want to risk them against the swordsman. So, the Watcher of the Bruinen will defend against the Goblin Swordsman. Spirit of the Citadel deals a point of damage and kills it. There is no Orc Taskmaster in play, so the resources don't cause problems there. Now I have to discard a card, so I'll ditch what's called Outrider. Actually, no. Uh, I will ditch the Landreval because there's no way I'm going with 14. Uh, Glowing will defend against the Spearman. Takes one damage, gains one resource. Oh, I totally forgot about Henemar. But I suppose I probably. Well, actually, I could use him to see the first card of next round's staging, though I'm not that bothered. I probably would have just used him to see this shadow card. Oh! Um, oh yeah, the... The swordsman that engaged me gained two resources from the Chamber of Records, but they didn't actually do anything because it instantly died. They briefly 
increased, obviously, Amaral's attack and defense. But that also doesn't matter because I'm going to defend him with this spearman who has a spear. So that's two points of damage immediately. And he dies. Goes to victory display. And now Frodo. Turning against the 8 attack, Chieftain of the Pit, deal X damage to defend and character X is the number of resources. Okay, no resources, so no damage. But 8 attack, so I raise my threat by 6. Yeah. Heal up Glenn and Theoden. And let's see, attack the. Two, six, seven. Yeah, it's more than enough. I don't have bow hammer. Ready, third, and with Mary. I was asked to keep in count. And yeah, I'll just do the mighty prowesses now. So the board is completely clear of enemies. And that's it for that round. Control that in. Now, Book of Eldercar. There is an event. Goblin Cleaver could definitely be worth recycling. So, yep, yeah, let's play the book. Oh, actually, I'll make the healing from Palin rather than Theoden. And okay, three more resources. I could play Bofa. I could play a Westfall Outrider. Let's play the Outrider. Okay, now this keeping count goes on Mary. So now Mary is plus five attack. Which I kind of didn't need, but whatever, it's fun to do this. So I'll to hold back a results for test of will. Um, yeah, let's just go spirit, one, two, three, drop my truck back down to 40. And request two, four, five, six, nine, twelve, fourteen. Six threat in the stadium area. Okay. Kill my other envoy of Pelagia. And the Westfold Outrider. And I can solve him. Take the damage, gain the resource. And force effect. Neither of them are enemies. So that's two threat. I make five progress. Five. This goes to the victory display. And probably better to go to the Western Hall first. Add another resource. Um, yeah, the effect on Western Hall is just while it's in play. It's not while it's in the staging area, but still clearing this first will take away that extra threat that we gain. So engage the swordsman here and kill it with a spearman. Now we're pretty well sorted out. Heal up. Then 
Another Molly's belt. And Citadel plate. Finally. Probably superfluous at this point. Good. Okay, let's do that and then let's play the Citadel plate onto Glowing. Oh, actually, before this stuff finishes, I'm going to make a little variable and do nothing with it. So we press 2, 4, 5, 8, 11, 13, versus 2, reveal, and it's going to be good to reveal the damage. Balan's Doom! First time we've actually seen this out of treachery. Oh no, no, except for when it came up and set up and didn't do anything. So, Surge Doom 1. Add one resource to each goblin enemy in play. Sure. I'll take it. And Pit Goblin, which immediately gets two resources and one from Deep Mines and takes the damage. So, thanks to the Goblin Skirmisher, the Skirmisher is attacking for six, the Pit Goblin is attacking for five. That's interesting, but won't actually end up being an issue. And the Pit Goblin is 6 threat, and the Goblin Skirmisher is 4. So that's out of 10 threat, I'm actually only making 1 progress. Nothing I can do about it. But you know, whatever. Okay, so I have attack. Hmm. Yeah, okay, so so we're going to engage like this. Do shadow cards. Glowing will depend. Plus one attack, and it's a goblin do it another shadow count. Okay, so five attack versus one defense, Glowing takes four damage and gains four resources. And over here, I defend with the spearman, which deals two damage and kills the skirmisher. So now we do some healing. <coughs> and I can't actually attack. Well, further can attack, but there's no point. Well, let's noise belt spirit. And actually, I'll give a reduction to this deck this time. Since this deck has Gandalfs it can use. And Control M. Okay. So. I might actually want to just sneak attack Gandalf in the resource phase. Wait, wait. Did I do the forced effects last round? Goblin Skirmisher. Balan's Doom, which surged into Pit Goblin. And then I stopped. So no, I did not. So let's just do it now. Technically, obviously, it would have been the shadow cards, but okay. So we would have gotten another pit goblin. So that would have been another sixth threat. So in fact, I would not have made this one progress. 
I would have lost the quest by five. Gotten the big goblin engaged here. Um Defended it after the skirmisher was dead, so it was only two attack. Defended it with Frodo. So we assault him in the staging area. And then killed it easily with Fred and Mary. Doing damage with mighty prowess to kill the swordsman. Okay. And play some progress with the Blade of Gondolin. So, in fact, I ended up in the same place that I was in before, only uh, with considerably higher threats. So, I'm going to sneak attack Gandalf in the resource phase just to drop my threat. And then I'll get into planning. I had a faint as well. Um, should I hold on to results for that faint? Yeah, probably. So let's play the Westfall Outrider. Real step, we'll draw cards. Unexpected courage. Could be a thing. Actually, okay, yeah, so if I do that first, then I'll play Bofer instead because. Now I can play the envoy and and add back the resource that I'll need for the faint if I want to play it. I'm still having both uh, extra resources and oh no, I can't afford to hardcast Gandalf, which was part of the plan, but never mind. Let's play this unexpected courage onto the Thaden. And yeah, okay. Let's quest two, four, six, seven, ten, thirteen, fifteen, seventeen. Versus two. Echoes. That could be a bunch of cards. Let's cancel it. Cave Troll takes the damage from Byron. And then the Force Effect gets me the Goblin Archer, which is killed by Byron. So just four additional threats. So 11 progress. Okay. Now the Western Hall is gone. Yeah, let's go to the Deep Mountains. And engage the Cape Trap here. Take out the shadows. Alright, so 6 attack Cape Troll. Faint. Uh, Pit Goblin undefended. Uh, add a resource to it. Doesn't do anything. I gain some more resources. Heal up. And now. Okay. So. Attacking for three. Attacking for one, two, plus five, seven. So I'm attacking for ten, eleven, twelve. Cave Troll is dead. I make progress with the Blade of Gondolin. I guess I'll attack for two. Uh, 
And here we go. So. Final copy keeping count. That's pretty unbearable. Maybe this is going out of order, but doesn't matter. Uh, draw a card with Evel. Here's Ever My Heart Rises, finally. Finally decided to turn up. Right on to Glowin. And three, four, five. Gandalf dropped my trap by five. And over here I will also play Westfall Outrider. And now let's quest. Two, four, eight, nine, ten, thirteen, sixteen, eighteen, twenty. This is an empty staging area. Reveal Western Hall, Upper Hall, Doom 2. Resolve the Forced Effect, which gets me one enemy. So, that's one, four, eight threat in total. So I'm making 12 progress, which is enough. So I'll heal up two more points of damage from Glowin. Discard the Outrider to engage the Taskmaster just for the hell of it. And make 13 progress. And win. So there you go, it's it's interesting. I quite like this as Nightmare Quests go. It was the first Nightmare I ever played, and I certainly enjoyed it. Um, I kind of never got to use it my Heart Riders, which would have made the threat much less of an issue, obviously. Um, keeping Count, I guess Keeping Count was kind of relevant just to kill the second troll at the end. That was something. Um, yeah, so uh, I'm pleased that that worked out. The Watcher of the Brunin with Spirit of the Citadel worked out very well. Mighty Prowess is a fantastic card in this quest because everything is an orc and there are lots of low hit points. So yeah, direct damage really was the way to go. I like that Theoden was useful. And of course, it, a lot of this almost certainly would not have worked if it were not for the fact that I had Berivor drawing me all of the cards. Um, though even with that, as noted, I kind of... I didn't get to do a lot of the stuff that I was planning on doing until quite late on in the quest. Citadel Fight didn't turn up for ages, and my heart rises didn't turn up for ages. It was a while before I got a second copy of Keeping Count, and it was mostly superfluous by that point, though not completely. Never actually used the Book of Eldercar, though obviously I could have. Recycling Goblin Cleaver could have been a big deal if I'd gotten swarmed by more enemies. Is there anything else in here? No. Just more copies of things. The Master of the Forge probably was unnecessary bit overkill in the card draw department, but it was, it was a valid option. Um, so yeah, that, that worked out very nicely. Very pleased with it. Thank you for watching, and goodbye.